Hi, everybody. Welcome to Celebrating Aviation with Mike Machat. Today, we're going to talk about the Republic F-105 Thunder Chief, the early years. It all started at the Thunder Factory here in Farmingdale, Long Island. Uh, Republic was created in 1939, and this factory was home to the P-47 Thunderbolt during World War II, the F-84G Thunder Jet during the Korean War, the F-84F Thunder Streak during the Cold War, and the F-105 Thunder Chief. It's amazing to look at these two airplanes and realize there's less than 20 years between their development. Well, we think of the 105 looking like this, the uh, production configuration, uh, but take a look at that copy, streaking skyward, we're racing along on the deck, able to intercept or retaliate against an aggressor. The new F-105 Thunder Chief brings to the United States Air Force a devastating weapon for defense. Love the writing in these ads. And only seven years after this ad was written, the F-105 was involved in a war it was never designed to fight. The airplane began, began as the AP-63, AP for Advanced Project, uh, kind of an RF-84F looking uh, evolution uh, of a fighter bomber. The first prototype, uh, 540098, uh, first flew uh, piloted by Republic test pilot Rusty Roth on October 22nd, 1955. Less than two months later, this airplane uh, encountered a, a situation where the right main landing gear extended during a high G, high speed turn at altitude, and uh, Roth landed the airplane on the lake bed. Uh, it was damaged in the recovery and it never flew again. The uh, fuselage was shipped back to Republic and we're gonna see what happened with that a little later on in the video. The second prototype airplane, 0099, uh, flew again with Roth at the controls, uh, made its first flight on January 28th, 1956. And here we see it in front of the at then new hangar at Edwards Air Force Base, the main base having been built uh, that same year. Uh, but you see the beginnings of the F-105 in the lines here. The air intakes are the flat RF-84F Thunder Flash type <clears throat> air intake on the uh, wing root. And then a very small uh, uh, vertical stabilizer, the ventral fin, trademark of the airplane. Uh, but these were powered, the, both prototypes were powered by the Pratt & Whitney J-57. Uh, the uh, larger, more powerful J-75 was uh, still in development and they wanted to get this airplane into phase one testing. So they flew them at first with the J-57s. And here's 099 uh, being towed into the new uh, Republic hangar on what they call Contractor Row at the new uh, Edwards uh, complex. Uh, kind of a special day for Republic to have its own facility on the uh, field. Well, here we have the production configuration. This is the F-105B. Uh, it's an area rule fuselage. Uh, the ferry sugar scoop air intakes a uh, taller vertical fin with an afterburner cooling intake at the base. And uh, you see now the lines of the airplane as we all came to know it. The first published photo of the F-105 was uh, seen here. And uh, it's obvious that the uh, tail area has been airbrushed. Uh, the background of Edwards has been airbrushed, the airplane sitting on Rogers Dry Lake. Uh, what's interesting though is that the air intake has not been airbrushed because you can't really tell from this view what's going on. It just looks like a really thick wing root. But the actual airplane uh, seen here, uh, 540100, no buzz number yet on the nose, no name on the nose yet, but this was the first production configuration airplane. It was shortly joined by uh, 540101. Uh, I should mention both these airplanes were built at Farmingdale and flown to Edwards, uh, disassembled in uh, two C-124 Globemaster transports uh, for each airplane. Uh, they were not allowed to make their first flights out of Farmingdale. Uh, the nomenclature, the designation, uh, I've seen referred to many times as the YF-105B, but technically these were F-105B-1RE aircraft. It's a nice color shot of uh, 0100 on the, on the lake bed now with its name, Thunder Chief. And here's uh, FH-101. I'll refer to these airplanes by the buzz number from this point. Uh, so FH-101 in a beautiful takeoff shot. Uh, those red pylons and pods on the wings, uh, the outer uh, uh, store assembly there is the uh, cameras for tracking weapon separation from the rotating bomb bay. 
And 101 was the subject of the first model uh, to be released of the 105 Ravel's uh, uh, Thunder Chief model in box scale for 89 cents in 1958. Beautiful, beautiful kit, by the way. Here's a nice shot of 101. Uh, the, the, this is actually the photo that inspired the, the box uh, cover that you just saw. And FH 102 uh, is a very uh, significant airplane in the program. It uh, is seen here rolling out of uh, Building 17, the final assembly building in Farmingdale. <clears throat> and uh, here it is on the east ramp, that's New Highway in the background, and it's getting ready for uh, being uh, ready for its first flight. I should mention that the 105, more than just being the Air Force's newest fighter bomber, the fifth member of the famed Century Series, uh, was really developed as more of a weapon system. Uh, it contained, uh, for the first time, Doppler radar, inertial navigation, an MA-8 fire control system, 20 millimeter uh, M61 Gatling gun in the nose, and uh, a design speed of Mach 2.15. So FH-102 was the first uh, F-105 allowed to make its maiden flight out of Farmingdale. Uh, if you look there at the bottom, you see all the traffic cars pulled over uh, on New Highway for everybody to watch. Uh, but here's uh, test pilot Lynn Hendricks making the inaugural flight of the F-105B. This particular airplane uh, became kind of the, the poster boy for uh, all the publicity shots. Uh, here you have the name uh, on the nose now and a kind of a bogus buzz number, but it was mainly for publicity, the F-105 seen there under U.S. Air Force. Um, what's interesting about this photo is that it was taken on a taxiway at Farmingdale, and you see those huge white letters uh, painted on the ground. They say Republic, and the reason was that uh, just a mile south was Zanz Airport, and they wanted uh, pilots to make sure they knew that Republic was a private field. Uh, it was close to the public, obviously. Um, but the trick for these PR photos was to uh, <clears throat> tow the airplane right on top of the R in Republic and let the white letters reflect up into the metal, as you see here. It was very effective for the, uh, for the ads. Uh, those are dummy external stores, but it gave the first indication of what this airplane was really capable of doing. Nice shot of uh, FH-102 with the F-105 buzz number on the nose, taxing back to the plant after a test flight. FH-103 was the last of the Block 1 F-105Bs, uh, shown here coming in for a landing at uh, Farmingdale. Uh, interesting uh, high angle of attack. The, the rate of descent on these airplanes clean uh, in the early test program was pretty significant. But uh, what made the Block 1 airplanes uh, unique was the canopy. Uh, the, it had a, a unique uh, canopy liner that formed the leading edge of the movable part of the canopy. And the 6 o'clock window that you see there uh, where the pilot could actually look over his shoulder and see somewhat behind the airplane. Uh, but the canopy was, uh, had a center hinge, and the Air Force requested that a more robust hinge system be designed, and so uh, it was replaced with the side hinges for the electrically operated canopy. And here we have FH-104 with the new canopy, uh, and that is now posed uh, right in front of the tower. Uh, this was a famous spot, uh, corner of a taxiway, and they would uh, go out on the balcony of the tower and take these kinds of photos looking down. Uh, that's test pilot uh, Dean Julien, and uh, he is uh, uh, posing there in front of a, a, a load that would not be carried on the airplane quite obviously all at the same time, but it was to give an indication of all the different types of uh, external stores, rockets, uh, the gun. Uh, and you see, if you look at the three fuel tanks just to the left of the nose in this photo, the center one has an interesting apparatus. We're gonna see what uh, what that was used for in a little bit. The man who made it all possible, Russian-born uh, designer, chief designer for Republic, Alexander Kartveli, uh, known as Sasha to his friends. And look at all the airplanes that this man uh, created, uh, really the, just the father of the Thundercraft, uh, just an amazing talent, and uh, retired, uh, passed away in the mid-70s. Here we have a color shot of uh, FH-102 in flight. Uh, these test schemes were all, each airplane had its own unique test scheme to uh, identify it from a distance. And this is probably the best example you could see of uh, the difference between the uh, YF-105A prototype up top and the F-105B below. This is the buddy system refueling uh, apparatus. It was not put into operation, but it was a test. Uh, it refueled both the F-105B and the F-104 Starfighter. 
but take a look at the uh, 099 at top there. You see the barrel fuselage, a non-area rule, the flat intakes, uh, and the J57 engine. And then with the 105B, you've got the uh, configuration that became standard for the production airplane. Uh, this is one of my all-time favorite photos, period. This is uh, 540111, which was the first F-105 delivered to the Air Force. It went to the 335th Tech to go fighter squadron at Seymour Johnson Air Force Base, North Carolina. Uh, a good view of the flower petal speed brakes in the open position. And uh, just what an elegant shape, especially clean with, uh, with no AUGS tanks. Just a beautiful, beautiful airplane. Well, you remember we were talking about the prototypes, and this is 099 on the ramp. But 098, after the uh, landing gear accident, was shipped back to Farmingdale. And that became, they used the fuselage for the mock-up of what was the original two-seat version of the Thunder Chief, the F-105C. Uh, this airplane never uh, came into fruition. Uh, the F model uh, came much later, and that was the first two-seater, but this was the uh, mock-up for that proposal. And the last thing I want to mention is the J airplanes, the JF airplanes. JF stands for Modified Airframe, and these were three of the original 12 pre-production prototypes. Uh, you see FH-105 here, FH-108 in the background, and then there was uh, 112. Uh, what was interesting about these airplanes is they had a photo recon nose section. If you look there, you can see the flat camera panels. They were never outfitted with cameras, but they were proposed for the RF-105. And that mission was uh, given to the McDonnell RF-101C Voodoo. But these airplanes became an asset for the flight test program because those enlarged nose areas uh, were excellent for carrying more test equipment, data recording, uh, telemetry, and things like that. So uh, these became very valuable uh, flight test airplanes, mostly flown at Farmingdale. And take a look at that nose wheel. You notice that there's no radar reflector on these airplanes. Uh, that came with the operational machines uh, years later. Uh, JF-3, as I said, uh, ship uh, 112, was used for developing the external stores. Here we have the twin uh, sidewinder mount, but they uh, tested all the pylons and, and tanks and uh, different shapes of weapons on the, on the wing. But I want to call your attention to the main landing gear door. If you look carefully there, you see a checkerboard pattern. Each of these JF airplanes had a unique color scheme so they could see them from a distance. And believe it or not, this airplane was painted like this. Hard to believe, but uh, back in the 50s, fabulous 50s, this was uh, considered pretty cool. Well, there you have it, a look at the early years of the F-105 Thunder Chief. Thank you so much for celebrating aviation with Mike Machat. See you next time.